32 year old patient present with fasting glucose levels of 124 mg per deciliter and 2 hour postprandial levels of 118 mg per deciliter. What will be the diagnosis for the patient? So the patient, uh, the question is related to the diabetes mellitus. So uh, we'll just try to understand the diagnosis of the diabetes mellitus first. So for the diabetes mellitus, before we understand the uh, method of diagnosis, we should understand there are certain classical symptoms, classical symptoms of the diabetes. Okay. So what are those? The classical symptoms are polydipsia. Then you have poly. Urea, you have weight loss, and then you have the polyphagia. Okay, now the first three are considered to be the classical symptoms, and sometimes we uh, eliminate the polyphagia from the classical symptoms. So the reason being, it is not measurable. You cannot measure how much uh, polyphagia is there, how much food the patient has taken. Although you can. Uh, understand the polydipsia and how much patient, how many glasses or liters of water the patient has uh, drunk okay polyuria also you can measure the urine outputs and weight loss can also be measurable that's why you do not consider the polyphagia as the classical symptom sometimes right now coming to the diagnosis of diabetes if we try to diagnose the diabetes mellitus so uh, first thing which can help you to diagnose it if the classical symptoms are there if classical symptoms are there and you have random blood sugar that is going to be more than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter okay so that is going to be uh, one of the uh, method by which you can diagnose it if the patient is having polydipsia polyuria weight loss and rbs is more than or equal to 200 milligram per deciliter then the patient can be called as diabetic the second way can be if the patient is asymptomatic and you take the fasting blood sugar and if the fasting blood sugar is more than 126 milligram per deciliter okay and that condition is called as the diabetic condition and if you give the patient 75 uh, gram of sugar or the glucose okay and you measure the glucose level again after two hours that is known as the postprandial blood glucose level so after two hours you will be measuring it if it is more than 200 milligram per deciliter okay then also the patient is confirmed to be diabetic now another very important test which we can perform that is the dependable test also so if the patient is asymptomatic and the uh, hb a1c that is your glycosylated hemoglobin is more than or equal to 66.5 percent okay then also the patient is said to be diabetic now if all these three options are given and you are asked which is the best way to diagnose so you will be ch checking this one because hba1c it is a retrospective test it is a retrospective test and the most important thing about this test is this give you the average sugar level of past three months okay so glycosated, glycosated uh, hemoglobin when it is measured so that will be giving uh, that will not be giving you the one time value but it gives an average value of blood sugar level of last three months and it is not affected by exercise and fasting so it's not affected by exercise and fasting are not going to affect this particular value that's why it is more dependable now uh, if you multiply HbA1c by 25 you will be getting the average blood sugar levels you'll get the average blood sugar levels for example if the HbA1c of the patient is 10 and you multiply by 2 and 25 so you will get it 250 milligram per deciliter is the average uh, blood sugar level in the past three months so that is more dependable and it is not affected by other and that's why it is going to be the best answer as well now if we see in this question the patient the glucose level of the fasting glucose level of the patient is less than 126 okay it is not more than 126 at the same time the postprandial levels are not more than or equal to 200 these are lesser than 200 so patient cannot be called diabetic now there is a condition that is known as the pre-diabetes okay or pre-diabetics so because these values cannot be ignored because these are the are at the borderline so you have to 
put some restriction on the sugar intake or some uh, lifestyle changes in these patients so that they do not develop diabetes. So we classify these patients as the pre-diabetes. Okay. So in the pre-diabetes, we have two. One is impaired fasting glucose and another is impaired glucose tolerance. So what is impaired fasting glucose? Okay. So whenever the fasting uh, plasma glucose levels are like more than or equal to 110 milligram per deciliter or and it is less than 126 milligram per deciliter then you are going to have call it the impaired fasting glucose now there is one another terminology that is impaired glucose tolerance so whenever the fasting plasma glucose is going to be uh, less than 126 milligram per deciliter and the postprandial glucose level is between 140 to 200 milligram per deciliter so you are going to have this particular condition in that is known as the impaired glucose tolerance so here in this question also you see that the fasting glucose level is less than 126 that is fine and two hours postprandial levels are between 140 to 200 right so of course it is 180 that is in this range so you are going to have the patient as impaired glucose tolerant or the pre-diabetic patient here in this category so answer is going to be 2.